So this video will show us how experts solve Newton's third law, also known as interaction diagram problems, using the sketch, organize, and solve method, SOS method. So we start with our sketch, and we want to always start a sketch by just drawing the problem. Activating our human minds that know how physics should work, right, and not just how algebra works. Our next step is getting an interaction diagram going. And for the interaction diagrams, we have a whole other video on how to do them. This is just going to be the basic steps. So we want to write, draw all objects as ovals. We want to define our system. with a box. Anything inside of that box is in our system. Anything outside of the box is the environment. And then we want to draw all forces in the system or crossing the system. So that's our interaction diagram. We'll see how that helps us out soon. Once we have our interaction diagram, then for each object in the system, we want to write a free body diagram. And when we do our free body diagram, for each of these, we want to label axes, we want to label forces, and we want to label our third law of Harris. We're going to use our interaction diagram to find the third law of Harris. Any forces that are entirely within the system are third law of Harris. We can also use our labels if we have right an FAB and an FBA. Anytime we can switch the two subscripts on a force, that means it's a third law pair. So that's going to be a lot of help for us in our organize and solve step. Let's see what that does for us. So in our organize step, we're always going to start by write, writing Newton second in vector form. So what that looks like is, oh, and then this is for each object in the system. So if we were to have two objects in our system, our second law would look like a sub a equals f b a plus f c a over the mass of a, and maybe we even have some more. And then a of b is going to look like f a b plus f c b plus others over the mass of b. So this is what we want to do. We want to just write out all the forces, and we can see pretty quickly from here that as long as I write things nicely, we have something like this. Once we have this, we want to then decompose our vector form into whatever convenient equations there are. And then we want to apply any third law pairs. So for example, we have the magnitude of FAB is equal to the magnitude of FBA. And so then we can then set these two equal to each other. And our last thing that we want to do is set acceleration constraints. For our acceleration constraints, this could be something like AAX equals negative ABY. Or we just have right AA equals AB. Something of this sort. Whatever we know. And again, we have another video talking entirely about acceleration constraints. So how do we get this used to solve? We want to then write apply. our acceleration constraints and our third law pairs. So 
to our decomposed equations. What this will likely do is give us a number of equations, a number less than we used to have, but still quite a bit. So we'll often have two equations, two unknowns, or three equations, three unknowns, and we must solve things often, very often, symbolically, and then substitute. So we need to write, keep going through this as we go through, and eventually we'll come across our answer. Once we don't want to have our answer, we want to then just write check units and the scale and sense of them. All right. If we follow these steps, then we should be able to solve any Newton's third law problem that we come across.